in three, two, one. Hold on there, Internet. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, and happy Friday or Saturday morning or... <laughs> Saturday, Friday morning, I think that covers everything, right? Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning. I think that's that's the span, right? <laughs> I, I think. Know. Yeah, that sounds about right. If um, if everybody could just quickly let us know if you can see us and hear us. Yes, please. Please, please. Uh, our internet, as you know, is... Absolutely abysmal. Kind of like a turtle. <laughs> So we need a video quality check yes, from our a, viewers a video and, and sound an quality audio check. quality check from our wonderful viewers, viewers and slash family listeners. members <laughs> and channel members well, and subscribers. I, I hope everybody's got a, a beverage. We're having a, a nice cup of coffee. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Quinnell, Judy, Raphael. Hi, guys. We are coming through loud and clear. Good. As long as you can hear us. I know the visuals with our live streams are always a bit um, uh, clunky. Kind of feels like we're taking you back to the 1990s. <laughs> oh! But uh, the Rosie sound, as long as you can hear us. Rosie says quality is good. Good, great. So that's good to hear. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yes, it's sort of partly our internet and partly your internet. If you've got super high speed internet, then you might actually see us okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. So great. Um, I think you guys in the States are heading into a long weekend. Am I right? We just came out of one. We had a long weekend last weekend. We had Victoria Day on Monday. And you guys have Memorial Day, I think, this coming Monday. Is that a day off for you guys? Is this like the first nice long weekend of the summer season? Because that's how we look at our long weekend. So I feel, I mean, it's, I have to say, it's weird having a long weekend when most of us are sort of stuck at home anyway. <laughs> but I will say this, the weather is starting to look much nicer out. We've had a, a handful of nice days in the last week. So, and when I say nice, I mean sunshine, a ton of bird song, the kind of day where you can step outside and not actually have to put on an, an extra layer. Um, and that is just, oh, I look forward to that for the whole winter and most of the spring. So <laughs> here we are. Um, and because we're heading into warmer weather, um, that kind of tends to take me away from um, like heavier yarn crochet projects. So I've been thinking a lot about lightweight crochet projects lately. <laughs> Mr. Stitch is I'm having a laugh because the little knitter says every day in the UK is a long weekend. I guess that's probably because of the worldwide lockdown, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. Um, Claudia says, yes, we're off Monday. Oh, great. But some, um, some people... Uh, are Something. working Monday, even though it's a holiday. Same with us. So same yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, certain yeah. restaurants and retail. And, yeah, some retail, some but restaurants. But this, all the this line. year, who knows what's yeah. open and what's it's, not? It's, it's such a confusing, complicated. And we don't really uh, go anywhere at all. We just sort of like we've been hiding this entire time in our house. So <laughs> we're like rabbits in their burrow. Yeah, we have no idea what's open. And Should what's we come closed. out and eat some salad? Or I feel like they they kind of they. At least here, I mean, it seems to be a little bit different everywhere, but here they were talking a little bit about opening and then they kind of back away from that and then they decide to sort of open some things but not others and then they kind of change how it's opening. It's all very confusing. We just we just stay home. <laughs> it's safer here. You're getting compliments on your hair. Oh, thank you, everybody. I thought I'd channel a little bit of the 1940s for the weekend. <laughs> nice, um, nice. I, and, you know, I'll tell you why. I was thinking about, oh... <laughs> You can finish your story. Okay, I'm going to finish my story. I was thinking about lighter weight projects. And I love, I have a tremendous amount of crochet thread, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Not because I've bought it, mainly because it's just sort of been given to me over the years. I don't make a lot of doilies or thread projects. So it tends to, you know, pile up and pile up and I don't use it. And this year I thought since I have it and I really you know, I'm not getting out to yarn stores, obviously, and doing any shopping. I'm really going to make a concerted effort to try and do things with the thread. So we're going to start that today. Um, but making things with thread makes me think about those fancy tablecloths and the pretty little curtains and all of that stuff that just takes a tremendous amount of focus and time. And it makes me think of my great, great aunts and my grandmothers. And that made me think of the 40s. And that made me think of just, you know, putting my hair up in pin curls last night. So... <laughs> 
So here I am channeling a little bit of the 40s and we're going to talk about crochet trends. So we're, we're kind of getting into the Wayback Machine. Our, our internet looks like the 90s, my hair looks like the 40s, and I'm, I'm probably holding a ball of <laughs> We are all over the place. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple of things we need to get to. First of all, a big thank you to Cheryl for joining our uh, Silk Level hey, membership. wonderful, thank you. Uh, welcome to Cheryl. <laughs> And we got a super chat from the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, awesome. With a massive shout out to Aww. me and my little family. Aw, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. Lone Ranger, I love that. The Lone Ranger. That makes me think that's also a nice, that's a way back show. What's that from? Um, we used to watch it when we were kids. But it was in syndication, right? Um, so I would say the the one from the States. Is it from the 50s, the 60s? Was from the, I'm going to guess 60s, seven, um, late 60s. Someone will know. Someone 60s, in the chat will know. I'm going to say late 60s. Late, or is it early 60s? The 50s. The 50s, I feel like. I, I think the like 50s is when uh, our parents were. Kids, I remember it in color. Cowboy stuff was really, really popular, and that would have been the 50s. Oh, right? Deborah says the 50s. The 50s. <laughs> Point for me. <laughs> I think the 60s. Okay, so, so, it so could be both. there's a little bit of a mild debate going on here. Well, 50s maybe there 60s. were a lot of different versions. I remember it. it in color. So did they use the same one and just turn it into color, or was the one the color one a new they one? Even do that? Because maybe there were two versions. I'm sure that's a popular story. I loved it when right? I was a kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Neato. The Lone Ranger. Here we are talking. Uh, uh, the the Lone machine. Ranger. Today's theme is like going back in time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got so my old-fashioned Victorian bell. You do here. have your Victorian bell. It's got such a lovely little ding This ding. is thanks to Mama and Stitches. Yes. She picked this up at a... Um, what are they called? The, the reuse store. Oh, a secondhand store. A secondhand store, yeah. like many years ago. I love. So I don't even stores. know how old this thing is, <laughs> but it just sounds so nice. You find the neatest stuff in those places, those secondhand stores. It's just amazing what people are like. Oh, I'm done with this, or I've got too many of these, or whatever. They're just. <laughs> I, should, I should have those. Um, it's like the neatest attic. <laughs> you, those people from the UK. Um, the what are they called? Uh, the antique um the antique road appraisers or the, the what is that uh, fortune in the attic i should or... have them look at it <laughs> something something in the attic so i love those shows i can't think of the name of it but that's one i like people would have like an appraiser come in and go yeah hey, we bought this house or this was my grandma's house and look at all this stuff and they come through and they figure out if they can you know they want to auction it off and they have to come through and figure out what it all is and what it was all worth and sometimes cash in the attic is okay that... digital palmy just googled it okay thank um... you <laughs> My dad, uh, let's see, I just Googled it. It aired on EBC in 1949, Whoa. and it went, it started in 49, and it went to 57. 40's here. Yeah. It went to 57. Thank you. That's a long-running show. Yeah. No wonder Here's so another one. Uh, aired from 49 to 57 with Clayton Moore. Clayton uh, Moore. He was the starring role. Mm. The dashing, the dashing sheriff, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it was the first true it. hit. I don't, I don't remember. I don't think I ever saw the show, but I don't think I had quite the same kind of television that you did. No, I grew up in the boonies. You, you grew up in the in the deep forest, down in the deep woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. All right, so thread. Meanwhile, to pull us all back, we're still back in time. Um, I thought I would talk a little bit about thread. So if you guys have any questions about crochet thread or hooks to use with thread or things you've like projects you've kind of wondered about about thread or when you would use it why you would use it how would you use it um feel free to um throw those questions into the uh live chat mr and stitches will gather the odd one out for me if we don't cover the the whole thing today in the chat and of course if you're watching this later after it's become a video then feel free to leave a question in the comment section um typically these are the things that you need to remember when you're thinking about crochet thread. So crochet thread is obviously a lot different than yarn. First of all, it's really, really thin. It's also not fluffy, typically. It's nice and um, tightly, tightly wound. And a lot of the time, it's cotton. Now, you can get wool, you can get acrylic, you can get blends, but a lot of the time, it's cotton. Um, and the sizing, so crochet thread does come in different sizes. The sizing works in the opposite direction of yarn. So if, for example, here in the West, we have a yarn sizing category that goes from one to currently seven. One being super fine or sock weight yarn, 
all the way up to seven, which is like a super crazy bulky weight category, which I have to say encompasses quite a wide range of thicknesses. You could go anything from just whatever is a bit larger than a size six super bulky to just that crazy thick stuff that you can, you know, like that giant roving yarn that you can kind of arm knit with. So the size seven category is just sort of the, the super gargantuan. <laughs> So in yarn, size small is one, size super large is seven. It goes in the opposite direction in thread. So a size one thread is pretty similar to a size one sock weight yarn, which is probably why they've done it that way. And the smaller your thread goes, the higher the number goes. So for example, um, my favorite thread size to work with is a size three. So it's also known as a fashion weight. Size five kind of falls into this category too. So size three and size five weight yarn is, it's, it's not so fine that it's really hard to handle. It's a little bit smaller and thinner than sock weight yarn. So I feel like with my arthritic fingers, this is a nice weight of thread to use. And you can make really pretty things with it. I brought in, where did I put it? I did bring it in, didn't I? Where did I put the, did I not bring my little, am I sitting on it? No, oh, maybe I did. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of questions that came in. I will entertain everyone with my bell while I'm back, you're waiting. I'm back, I'm back. Okay, a size three or size five is really nice for making things like, this is a collar. So I, we did a tutorial on this. So we have a tutorial on how to make this little collar, which just looks so precious on. I love this. So we're, it's a nice way to dress up a t-shirt um, or like something that doesn't have a collar. Um, I like to wear this if I'm sort of like at the office or something. It's also just really, really pretty. So uh, fashion weight, size five, size three, thread, really nice for making accessories and clothing what's the question uh well this one's from philip can one purchase a non -merc mercerized cotton crochet thread yes i think you can get cotton crochet threads or wool or acrylic threads that are not tightly 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 spun or treated with that chemical that makes it um see mercer mercerization is a chemical treatment <clears throat> that makes the yarn the cotton typically, more pliable and more receptive to dye. So it's gonna receive the dye and hold on to the dye. And it also just makes it a little less, um, just it kind of gives it more of a little sort of a satin efficient finish. So you don't end up with like the little fluffs and stuff. But yes, you can absolutely get um, threads or super fine weight thread category yarns. <laughs> this is where it gets confusing that do not have that kind of treatment to it. Um, I think like wools and acrylics and stuff won't be, won't, won't have that treatment. Um, so yeah, you can get that. Uh, I don't know how it would act with um, making clothing. I imagine that if it's wool or acrylic, it's gonna feel like wool or acrylic, um, but I haven't actually fiddled with that stuff yet. Most of what I've inherited is the cotton stuff. I do have some acrylic and I've made some cute bracelets out of it. Um, but I, and I think I actually have some wool, but I haven't made any, I haven't made anything wearable out of it. I've only made like just little odds and sods over the years. And I don't think I've got any of those nearby either. <laughs> when I say over the years, I've been doing this for like decades. So <laughs> I don't always have everything I've crocheted hanging, hanging around. Um, but yeah, you, you can totally, you, you can, but most of the thread you're going to find is, is typically cotton. That's the stuff that's readily available. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a good copy. Okay, so um, the size 10, this is the three, this is the five, this is the stuff that I like the most. So this is the stuff that I would buy if I was gonna make something to wear, like a, you know, a collar. Jewelry, if you're gonna make like tiny little earrings and stuff, then the size 10, so the super fine weight thread, the thread that you think of when you think of like tablecloths and grandma and stuff, that's the size 10 category. It's really, really thin. It's almost, thinner than embroidery floss. So if you're a little more familiar with embroidery floss, um, I'm just gonna wrap some around my finger here. This is this is a little thinner than that. So I'm wrapping all the way around the end of my finger. Let's go to the other camera. It's gonna rest sure. if we can get a close up. Let's see what I can do here. I'm just gonna wrap some around my finger. And it's, you can see how like super small it is. 
So it's really, really, really small. It's pretty much like embroidery floss, um, except that you it's not as it's not as fluffy or as easily taken apart like embroidery floss. It's so thin I can barely you see can it. Probably I can barely, barely see, it. see it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll wrap it a couple come, times there. Come up a little closer. There we go. So, yeah. Wow, it's really thin. I'll wrap it a few more times. What size is that? 10? This is size 10. So this is the this is the finest weight thread that I've seen on the market until you, you can go thinner, but at this point you may as well be just using sewing thread. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's much of what I have in the thread category. And they usually come on great big cardboard spools like this. Here's another one. This is, I love this okra color. This is like, a, it's kind of not pure white. I've got pure white right here. Let me get my coffee out of the way. So I've got pure white and I've got okra. And that's that sort of creamy off-white color. That's sort of an antique white. Sometimes that's what it's called. I love that. It's really pretty. It's kind of like beige. We got a super sticker. Oh. <laughs> thank you. A big thank you to David for number one fan. <laughs> thank you, David. It's, uh, it's, the little, it's the little pear guy jumping up and down. Says number one fan. A little pear. I love that. This yeah. <laughs> thank Happy you beer. thank you david thank you very much david i love the stickers yeah the they're, stickers are so cute they're really cute they're really cute and they're animated, animated yeah which is fun. you get to you get to sort of get entertained over there i get i get a lot of entertainment with the stickers yes <laughs> so um so that's kind of a, a quick run through all the different sizing in crochet thread so you're most likely going to see five three and ten on the market that's the most common one it's typically the mercerized cotton um, and the one category is may, you may as well be using sock weight yarn because right? it's pretty much that same thickness. The size one is a little bit thinner, or I should say the size 10, the super fine thread is a little bit thinner than your standard embroidery floss, but you can use embroidery floss in lieu of a size one thread if you want. So if you were just making a very small little project, then you could use embroidery floss if you didn't have any size one thread, but I will say this. The embroidery floss is a lot softer and more malleable than your typical size 10 crochet thread. Crochet thread tends to be a little on the stiffer side, which is what makes it so good for doilies and, you know, like slightly stiffer things. Like you think of maybe really fancy Christmas ornaments that are like, you know, like when they, they crochet over top of um, like a, a, an ornamental ball. <laughs> that looks so pretty. Here's a, a question from Jessica Rabbit. Sure. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> When working with crochet thread, I can see it just fine, but I feel motion sickness. Yeah. Any idea why? Well, um, yeah. most likely because you're really struggling to focus on such a it's small, small thread. It's small, yeah. Um, it's because your point of focus is so small, even you're if you can still see it. You're probably wavering off of yeah, like I'm okay. I'm I'm middle aged, and I have what? just started. To wear you it. just turned twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, for the billionth time. For the forty ninth time. No, I'm middle aged, and I'm happy with it. So <laughs> I got no problem with that. Um, but I have hit that age where I'm starting to notice that my focus is not as close as it used to be, and that really slowly creeps up on you. So I have reading glasses that sometimes I can wear, and sometimes they make me sick. So I feel like my eyesight is in that little transitory phase where it's like my focus isn't as close as it used to be. Some days it's better than others. Some days it's better if I hold it out further. So I don't know how old you are, Jessica, but if you have eyes that are kind of going through that transitory phase or the lighting is changing on you while you're working on that super small point of focus, mm -hmm. that will easily make you motion sickness. Um, to talk gamer talk for a second here, <laughs> I can't play any of those first person games where the the... The, everything where you have to move the I can't do anything where you like that. see the hand uh, first person yeah. where you see the hands you see the and hands. not the, the body I, of the character and I, I can't play those they make me nauseous immediately and I could never play that VR stuff with a headset on that is never going to happen because I get I get easily moved and I used to get motion sickness in the car when I was little so um, I think if you're kind of prone to that but strangely enough I don't get seasick you could try you could try if you're really interested you could try really good light and those large okay. magnifying, magnifying glass. The yes. large ones, though, the not a ones. little one, because that'll make you even dizzier. I think it has to be like one of those rectangles. If you've ever seen them, they sit. That you can put them around your neck, and they sit out like right here, up on your shelf, and you can look <laughs> through them. So they're a nice big square. They rest against your rest against your chest, and you can sort of comfortably look down through that. Those are great. 
Um, you can also get jewelry magnifying glasses. So if you're into making beading and stuff, they make these things that have a magnifying glass and then have little pincer hands that can hold the work you're working on while you work underneath it. There's a lot of different magnifying options on the market. It just depends on, I guess, what your setup is and maybe how much magnification you're looking for. But um, I would say you need as best lighting as possible. And if you do need reading glasses, you might find those help. But if you're like me, take them on, take them off, um, change up your lighting because that little point of focus is so small. It'll, it, it can make you like a little bit, um, not quite dizzy, but it, it messes with your perspective. And sometimes that's just enough to kind of put your center of gravity out of alignment and then move on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's quite a change to work from the size of yarn that we're used to working with to going super small. Just like if you are used to working with like a medium weight yarn, if you go to a super crazy bulky weight yarn and you're using a big hook, that takes some getting used to. And if you're not used to manipulating a big hook and big thick yarn, you have to, you can't just necessarily run it through your fingers or around your pinky. You kind of maybe have to hold it with your entire hand. You might notice like different pulls or different weight, you know, like on different muscles and tendons in your body. So you might find that it hurts a little bit. Same thing if you go super small. I tend to, you all know, I feed my, my yarn through my two middle fingers. Well, I tend to do the same thing with crochet thread, but boy, that is so much smaller. I have to keep those two fingers pinched a little more closer together. And that first row or whatever I'm doing, that first establishment row of crochet with thread is so tricky and my chains are all different sizes and my stitches aren't even and tidy. And I always get sort of through that first little bit and I think, is this gonna look okay? <laughs> but the bigger your piece gets, the easier it is to handle because you can just hold on to the piece and then things kind of generally even out from there. Um, so if you've never tried crocheting with thread, don't be, don't, don't be disheartened if you find it difficult to start with because it's difficult to start with. <laughs> um, if you find like you've got some extra new pains or whatever working through your, your tendons, that's perfectly understandable because it's so small, you have to change the way you hold things. And if you find that it's it's hard to, like, to focus on, like Jessica was saying, <laughs> excuse me, then take a break because it is a little harder to look at. I'll take a sip of my coffee here while I'm did you ring the bell? <laughs> Someone said it sounds like the little store when you go into yes. uh, Little House on the Prairie when they went into the little ding, general ding. store. Yeah, I love it when the little bells overhead yeah. walk through the door. We have a super, super chat. A super, super chat. <clears throat> from Philip's daughter. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Did you get your, I, I've been wondering if you got your little, um, your little Animal Crossing game. Yes, she did. So <laughs> she's been talking about it. <laughs> Philip's, da Philip's daughter says, Excuse me. Hello. Hello. This is Philip's daughter. <laughs> I am making the unicorn fancy granny square. Oh, wonderful. I am loving it and I am going to re uh, I am going to recover a pillow with it. I love that. Awesome. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, that is so make cute. Sure, um, make sure you send us a picture like when a you're nice, done. Yeah. Either on um, Instagram or through the Etsy at, shop. Through the Etsy shop is, yeah. is good. Yes, yeah. 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 We do send get us to a Instagram, picture through but the Etsy shop. It takes shop. us a couple of weeks sometimes to catch up. <laughs> um oh and also we got another super chat oh wonderful thank you from the lone ranger, the lone ranger again. <laughs> i feel like there should, should be like blowing a bugle or something yeah. <laughs> did they use those i don't know in the lone ranger see again never watched the show so i tend to i'm not sure like like was the lone ranger i remember a really fancy dude in like a white outfit with a really cool hat on a horse wasn't that the dukes of hazard <laughs> The boss hog. Was, the Lone Ranger, he was, always in a was he like um was he like a sheriff? Was he a was he a like a police officer I, back I, in the I day? I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. I only know the term the Ro the Lone Ranger, but I don't think I ever saw anything. <laughs> Fun. Um so thank you everyone. Thank you um very we much. have another super chat. <laughs> thank you. Walking into the general walking, walking into the general, general store, store in, in uh, <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. This is from Kara. Hi, Kara. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Kara says, hi from Scotland. Oh, hello. It must be five in the afternoon, four, five. Um, it would be about, yeah, about 5.30. About 
Um, so Kara says, hi from Scotland. I'm nearly finished making your folk art blanket. <gasps> Took three days and I just got wow. a few more things to sew on. I loved making it. Wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. Wow, three days. Holy cow. Wow, you must crochet really fast. Full time. <laughs> that three days, that's quick. That's great. Woo. It's the, you know what? A lot of little appliques don't take too long, especially if you're comfortable with like all the different stitches. It's the sewing on. Awesome. That, that takes, takes the, requires me to slow down and, and go patient. <laughs> and a super chat from Bethany. Thank you, Bethany. Bethany <laughs> says, <clears throat> I started a grid cardi that uses size one yarn. Ooh. I have to make breaks because it started to cramp my hand. Yep. LOL. That's the problem I get. Um, going to tea with some friends today. Lovely. Nice. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Tea with friends. That I'm looking forward to that. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's, that's, oh, wow, a cardigan. with That's going to be so fancy. That's going to be really nice. <laughs> uh, Instagram is um, at Jada and Stitches or hashtag Jada and no, Stitches. At, we're at Jada and Stitches. At Jada and Stitches. Whatever it is on it's, Instagram. Uh, it's one. That's how often I'm on it. I don't. <laughs> one word. Yeah, if you just, I don't know, if you search people on Instagram, Jada and in Stitches should be just one word. Um, yes. Yeah. That's where we are on Instagram. And I like I said, we get if, on there like I try like to, once every two weeks. Every couple of weeks. Yeah. I just there's it's if, if you're I don't get to it as often as Yeah. Um <laughs> takes me a while to catch up. YouTube and Etsy is where we frequent the most. It takes the most time, yeah, for sure. So we don't we don't we try to get to Instagram and Twitter, frankly. Twitter like is like every every, couple of every weeks. three to four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we try. We try. There's a lot. There's a lot out there. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so back to the thread. I love having stuff that I can make things with without having to go out. So I really do like stash busting projects. Um, you see us doing a lot of projects right now that are very much focused on what you may have at home. Um, just because in most cases, we can't just get out and go to the store. Um, and I love that we can order online. I'm so grateful that we are living in a, you know, a time when that is sort of an option for a lot of us. It might not be an option for some people, whether because, uh, you know, the postal services are really bogged down or you just don't have the money for it right now. But if you've got a little ball of some crochet thread lying around, I thought today we'd show you how to make some really simple tassels. Um, I've got a whole bunch of tassels that I've already made up and I'm just going to show you some with thread and some of the embroidery floss. So I'm, like when I'm saying thread today, you can also use embroidery floss. You can also use yarn. So this is like how to make a tassel basically. But this is what I started playing around with my crochet thread for. I've seen tassel earrings all over Pinterest lately, and I'm gonna just, I don't know if you can see them, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold We'll them. go to the other Sure, table. sure. Um, so I'll just show, I've got these little, these little white ones here are made out of crochet thread. Um, they're, they're just so dainty and they're so cute. And of course, because it's mercerized cotton, it really keeps its shape. So I can flatten it and wear it kind of out, or I can just sort of stroke it into a nice little, you know, tassel -y shape and it'll stay that way. Um, I, I really enjoyed making these with the crochet thread. We're going to make some today. So if you've never made a tassel before, you don't even need anything fancy. You just need your fingers basically. Um, and these ones, these cute little ones here, these pinky ones, um, I used embroidery floss. So if you've only got embroidery floss, because maybe you were into bracelet knotting or embroidery or something at some point, and you've got a bunch of that lying around, um, you can make really pretty little um, soft tassels with the embroidery floss. And I made a pair of earrings, and then I also made one that I put on my, I put on a, a, just a cute little simple bracelet, and I put a jump ring around the top of it. So uh, jump rings are, if you're not sort of familiar with jewelry terms, jump rings are those little tiny metal rings. They're just a, they're just a ring, and they've got like a one little opening on the side, which allows you to open them and close them with a pair of pliers. And I just put a, I put uh, a jump ring through the middle of that little tassel and put it on my little bracelet. I'm just, I'm just because I've seen this all over Pinterest lately, and I just think it's so darn cute. So those are, that's the pink one. And then I made a set in two colors. So that's a bi-colored tassel. I used orange and blue because I have a summer dress that I wear all the time. And I'm sort of anticipating that I actually, you know, get to go out at some point this summer. <laughs> um, and I wanted to have a, a sort of a nifty 
kind of a, you know, a boho feeling pair of earrings to go with that, um, that long flowy summer dress. And the summer dress is largely orange and navy blue. So I made a bi-colored pair of, of um, tassels. And I finished them, like, I'm, I'm not going to get into how to mount them onto earrings. This is basically just, I used some, some very thin wire, and I just strung some beads on the wire and then tied it to the bottom of the earring fastener. So really basic. There's no super, you know, fancy activity or um, technique here. I'm not a jewelry maker, but you can get bags of earring fasteners that already have, like, the little hook earring and the little circle underneath it. You can get bags of those at um, probably on Amazon right now for sure. But also like if you get into craft stores when they reopen, you can find packages of them there. And of course, beads, you know, glass beads, any kind of beads you want. These ones are just plastic, those typical little pony beads, but they're heart shaped. Uh, Dollar store sometimes has stuff like this, like little package of fasteners. I, I think Walmart carries them too. So if the Walmarts are open. Um, so yeah, that's just basically the simple way to make um, some pretty little earrings. And I feel like because I'm seeing them on Pinterest, I don't know if this was in this year, last year, 10 years ago, who cares? They're cute. I like them. And they feel really, I have to say, they feel really nice against your face when you're, when you have your earrings on and like that little tiny tassel just sort of brushes the side of your, your neck. It feels really nice. So we thought we would show you how to make um, a little tassel today. I'm just going to have another little sip of my coffee. Here. Mm, coffee. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you can use thread of any size. You can use embroidery floss, any color. Uh, you can use yarn. So if you only have yarn and you don't just have to make tassels for earrings or jewelry of any kind, you can make tassels for, as you know, anything. You can hang tassels on blankets, pillows, on uh, sweaters, um, those cute little crop top things for the summer, some tassels along the bottom would look so cute. Hang them on your purse, make one and make it a fancy keychain. Like you can make a really big fat tassel with some yarn. Um, you can blend a bunch of colors together. <sighs> tassels are fun and they're a great way to use up things like thread or embroidery floss um, and actually, you know, put some use to it. So like I said, you can make some kind of fashionable jewelry with it or just use it as a little decoration or something. And uh, they're fun to make. And and you, like I said, you don't need any special tools, no special skills. I'm gonna try how to use it around, just around your fingers. You're gonna want, if you're using yarn, you're gonna want a yarn needle. Um, if you're using crochet thread or floss, you're gonna want a needle with a slightly larger eye to it. I'll show you in a second. And um, scissors, that's it. That's all you really need. So super, super simple. Oh, and if you wanna put it on jewelry later, you can use the jump rings, but you can also just tie them to things. So you can use wire, jump rings, you can use more yarn, more thread, whatever you've got. It's not, um, we're not, we're not talking high tech here. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That is a good coffee, Mr. And Stitches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because um, I take my coffee making very seriously, because the table is about the same color as my hand, I guess I'm wood colored. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use this green thread. So, if uh, hopefully this will show up pretty nicely, we're just like I said, our internet's not the best. And so, I'm just going to show you how I would go about making one of these little tassels. I'm going to get my coffee out of the way so I don't hit it. So I'm going to use some um, some crochet thread. I'm just going to get my little earrings out of the way. Put them over here. Um, and I'm going to use, so I've got a needle. This is a needle with a pretty large eye. It's kind of like a, it's not quite a darning needle, but it's big enough that um, my thread can pass through it. So that's what I want. If you're using yarn, you can just use like your regular old like yarn needle or whatever. So uh, whatever you're using, I'm just using thread today. And you want a pair of scissors. You're so getting you more and more compliments on your new hairstyle. On my new hair. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> so um, yeah, I figured I'd channel a bit of the 40s today since we're talking about crochet thread. So really, in order to make the little earring, so this this little tassel here that I made, I'm just gonna make one this size. If you're gonna make, if you want it to be longer or you're using yarn, you're gonna use all four of your fingers. But if you're making one this size, you're just gonna use three of your fingers. And when I say three of your fingers, I really mean that. So we're first, we're gonna cut a little length of, of crochet thread or yarn. So just a little length, maybe, I don't know, what is that, six inches, 15 centimeters? Just put that aside. I'm gonna get my needle out of the way so I don't hit it. And I'm gonna put this on my 
yarn ball. <laughs> and then you're just going to take your thumb and forefinger, grab the end just so you have control over it. And you're going to wrap around your first three fingers. If you're making a really long one or a really thick one, use all four of your fingers. And then I wrap it about 20 times and that's it. So I'm just gonna... <clears throat> Bouncing back to your hair. Sure. <laughs> your pretty hair. Hee hee hee. Big smile. It feels like, uh, it's actually nice and light and fluffy. It feels, and, it's, and you know what, when I lean over, I don't end up with my bangs in my eyes, so <laughs> that's a win. Oh, we have a super chat. Hey. I'll take a break and have a super chat. Yeah. <laughs> a big thank you to Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. Courtney loves reading. Oh. Love your videos. Love there are some helpful crochet techniques for the blind on YouTube. Oh, cool. I'm blind, and the videos my by sister Margaret Mary have helped me. Oh. Cool. Excellent. That's really neat. She best. She must be very good at explaining things. Yeah. He'd have to be. <laughs> any any visual art needs to be well explained. That's really cool. Thanks that, very much. That is great. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. So I've wrapped this thread around my fingers about twenty times. <clears throat> I like the thickness of that. So if I'm, that's about twenty wraps. I think I wasn't really counting, but who cares. Um, now I'm just going to snip the yarn, so right at the edge of my finger, and then I'm going to slowly take oh, out two. I forgot to flip to the. Uh, yeah, no problem. The tutorial. <clears throat> so that's that was wrapped around three fingers. That's about twenty. I'm holding it with my thumb and forefinger. I pulled two of my fingers out, and now I'm just going to put it down. Nothing fancy. It's not going to unwind on you. And then you're going to take that long piece of yarn or thread, whatever you've got, and. Here's where I cut it. So on the opposite side, I'm going to just string my thread through it. Now, if you were going to be using a jump ring or um, wire, this is where you would be doing that. You'd be sort of putting the jump ring or the wire around this end. And you're just going to tie a knot right at the end. Sort of tug it up to the top. Right, nice and tight. Just a typical knot, nothing fancy here. There we go. And now you've got something to hang your tassel with. Now you're going to cut another length of string. So about six inches, 15 centimeters. A little more is fine too. And holding on to that jump ring, the wire, excuse me, whatever you may have tied the top of that with, you're just going to sort of Pull down on all of those and smooth them out. And then just about a pinky's width away from the top, you're going to take your thread about an inch and a half away from the end and just start wrapping around that spot. So you can get a couple wraps in, sort of straighten it out a little bit. Um, you want to keep that little bit of end open so that you can tie it in a knot. So maybe do two or three wraps and then pull nice and tight from both sides and that'll help close off that. And you just sort of keep tugging away on things. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, when asked if you still use the yarn winder I got you. Oh, constantly. And the answer is an, an, a resounding yes. Oh, yes. Um, and uh, Crafty Chats says the yarn winder would make a great live stream party. Just so winding discussing, yarn. <laughs> discussing how, you know, how to use it and Absolutely. winding yarn. And we do have a video that's um, focused on unboxing it and sort of using it and reviewing it. You can check that out. But uh, yeah, great idea. I love that thing. I'm just going to say. It's awesome. Like we bought it. Nobody gave it to us. Uh, I mean, Mr. Institute just gave it to me. But it was one of your birthday it gifts. It was my birthday gift last year. I love Oh, for the it. record, guys. I uh, love Jada's it. birthday lasts like three months. Yes. I don't know how this happens, but <laughs> mine's a day and hers is like three months long. <laughs> I love it. I, I love that thing. I use it all the time. And Mama and Stitches got one the same day, and she loves hers. She's she's probably wound more yarn than I. Oh have, yeah, she she loves that. She thing. starts fires with that thing. 
This okay, back to our little tassel. <laughs> I've wound this string about, like I said, it's about a pinky's width down from the top um, so that it's it's nice and tight, as tight as I could make it. And now I'm going to tie those two ends together. Same thing, sort of tie it once, tie it twice. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. So nice and tight. And it's small, so it's a bit finicky to work with. There we go. Now, here's where you want to use your needle. I like to take the ends of the ties, and I'm going to thread up my needle here. don't have my reading glasses on, so I'll see how well I can do this. Mm. Let's try it the other hand. You can do it. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> Bethany also gets a three-month birthday. Oh, good. See, see. I, I'd like to know how how you guys um, manage this this system of three-month-long birthdays. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Well, if I do think of it, I'm certainly not about to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the trick. I want to know the secrets. I'm and not the giving tricks. away my secret. I want a three-month birthday too. Okay, so I thread up that little end, and I'm just going to tuck it down. So I might actually have to redo this. If your end isn't long enough like mine is, take your needle and just tuck it down through the inside of all those little wraps. And now I'm going to have to re re-thread it, but that's okay. We're not going anywhere here. There we go. And just pull that down through the center. There we go. And that will help hide the knot and it'll just make it look a little neater. And then you don't have to worry about trimming anything or having a knot un unwind on you. So um, you've got two ends, so you have to do it twice. <laughs> Split it. Ha ha. Ah, that'll do. I'll pull the whole thing down. Okay, and there's the other one. So I've pulled both ends down through the center. I find them, I give them a nice little tug. And then you can't really see that knot. It's it's nice and, oh, that just looks so cute. Already looks like a little, little tassel. I'll get my ne needle out of the way here. Nice safe spot. And then you want to just grab your scissors and just start snipping all those little loops. So you just run your, 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 scissors underneath the loops. Make sure you get them all. There's another one there. Looks like our video is coming through a bit blurry. Is it? Yeah, not sure exactly why. It's probably just... Most likely our internet our is, internet's is dipped because all the kids are watching uh, their cartoons <laughs> or something. We'll switch back to the other camera and see. Are you done with the Almost. tutorial? Okay. So I've snipped all of my little loops. So if you just fan it out here, you can see if any of your loops are missing. And then you just want to trim it up. So I like to kind of get all those little ends together and then just cut a little bit at a time. And then re-smooth it out, see if there's any funny little spots. That looks great. And just keep little tiny bit at a time. If you cut off too much, you can't add it back on, right? So <laughs> there you go. And there is a sweet little tassel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little bit of fluff there. So and you just basically make two and you've got, you know, a pair of earrings or you make a you know several dozen and you can attach them to just about anything you want. And it's a great way to use up that Especially if you have, like, for example, this, my little partly used ball of crochet thread that's this really pretty dark green. I don't know what I would use this for. I'm not even sure how much is left here, but these little tiny projects like this, I can make a whole bunch of these and then just add them onto another project at another time. And because it's cotton, it's got a nice long life ahead of it. So it can go through the washing machine. I can use it sort of in a high traffic area, like on a little uh, tassel on my purse or something. And, um, oh my gosh, it's just so cute. It looks great. I love little tassels. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the other sure. camera. Maybe it'll be a little clearer. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a super chat. Bing, bing. <laughs> Thank Wee. you. This is from Dara. Thank you, Dara. Um, listening to you on the road. Thanks for everything. On the road. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Nice. Ah, 
Boy, technology is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some people reported a blur, a slightly blurry video, yeah. and others reported like a perfectly clear fun. video. So it sounds to me like it's the internet. It's, it's the internet. So we have very slow internet, but if you have really fast, like really good high speed internet, then it might kind it, of break even. It might even out. But if yeah. you're also in a remote air, locale like we are, and your internet's a bit dodgy, then it's probably going to look yeah. a little, a little bit. Blurry. You can always go back and rewatch re it because sometimes um, YouTube managed just to sort of like it catches up with itself yes. and then the replay it sometimes looks better when it's not live true is better yes sometimes just sometimes yeah um so that's good to know um i'm just gonna put my earrings in i just thought <laughs> um so if you've once you've got that little like i said with um you can i used just some more thread to tie it up today so i could tie this to another project i could tie it into like the edge of something i could um, even sew it into something because crochet thread size 10 is so light and thin you can pretty much treat it like embroidery thread um, you can you can do some sewing with it because it's like really really thick cotton it's like I said it's not as um, it's not as flexible or as soft as embroidery floss and you can't really unspin it and pull apart the different flies look how nice those look on you Let's see if I can get this one earring. Little tassel oh, earrings. There. There's my earrings. Bye -bye. I get a little closer so you can yeah. see it. In my crazy hair. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you the belt. I, <laughs> I just instead of using thread for this part here, where you just sort of like to make it a make it attachable to something, I used jet jewelry wire, which is like a really tiny thin gauge wire. It comes on a spool. Um, I don't have it available at the moment. It's sort of tucked away. Um, but you can probably get that on Amazon right now, too, if you wanted to give that a try. And it's an, um, I think, um, you can, there's various gauges. So there's various different sizes. But just get the jewelry, the jewelry gauge or whatever they recommend for jewelry. Just a thin gauge wire. Um, you just sort of twist it. And then you can string a couple of beads on it like I did here. And then wrap the rest of it around the bottom of your little, like, earring. And just... Trim off whatever's left, tuck in the little tiny bits. You're going to want a pair of like pliers and stuff for that, like a pair of needle nose pliers, uh, especially small needle nose pliers if you're doing sort of small things. But um, <laughs> that's just if you want to make earrings. If you want to make something like this, I just love this, my little, my little bracelet. Um, that's just pony beads and a little, you know, trinkety cute thing. And I put a jump ring around it and then I just threaded it onto the bracelet while I was threading the rest of the beads. So it's, it's not tied on at all. I use that metal jump ring and it works beautifully. And that's so cute. I just, again, it's nice and soft. It feels kind of sweet against your arm and it's just, it's like a nice little dangly thing. I kind of like that. Um, and you can use them all these, in all these other places. Like I really like the look of, maybe this is, um, I don't know, maybe this is out of style. I'm not sure. I've never really been <laughs> in style, but I love the way um, big, tassels look on tie backs for curtains or like I just sort of love tassels on things I like them used as like around the edges of pillows I like tassels used as bookmarks you can make a really long like, like cut a long thread tie that up and then you could um, do a little a little tiny bit of chaining and tie something heavy to the end like like a little you know little pendanty thing and then you've got like a really simple cute little bookmark that just sort of sits at the edge of your book you can do so much with tassels. And like I said, this is a nice way to use up sort of those odd remnants of crochet thread. But you don't just have to use thread. You can use yarn, um, you know, if you've got like some even thick weight yarn. The super thick weight yarn, like the chunky weight yarn that, that tends to get fluffy, will make a really fat, fluffy, almost like a pom-pom tassel. So keep that in mind. If you want a nice thin, like trim, <laughs> stays in place kind of tassel you want to use threads um yarn that's maybe a little heavy silk um anything that's got like a nice bit of sheen to it that's like fine and, and tightly spun those will make really nice soft um they tend to keep their position sort of tassels big fluffy ones and those are cute too you might want something that's a bit fluffier or sort of like really fans out if you want like you know cute fluffy tassels for earrings or whatever your project is then yarn will help make that like really really fluffy you can unwind it a bit you can even brush it a little bit and it'll just go like a like a pom-pom 
so yeah, you can use whatever you've got lying around for this for to make some tassels, and they're 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 fun. You can make them with the kids. You can make some with your friends. You know, you can you can, you, you can think of about a billion things to attach a tassel to, <laughs> and it doesn't require any you know high end tools or anything fancy. And it's kind of a nice thing to, if it's hot, especially. I know some people have really had already a few heat waves. You can just sort of sit down and relax and just sort of wrap it around your fingers, you know, and uh, you can you can keep making them bigger so if you you know if you want to make really really big ones grab some cardboard you know if you finish the cereal off get the cardboard box out and just wrap it around wrap it around a book you all you need to do is wrap it around something that you can get around and the longer you wrap obviously the the longer your tassel is going to be and the more you wrap so the more wraps the wider and the thicker your tassel will be so you can have a lot of fun <laughs> experimenting with different sizes and thicknesses, different colors, different textures. I mean, all these different yarns and threads are going to react a little bit differently. Um, but I haven't yet met a tassel I didn't like. So, <laughs> and if you just make up a whole bunch and you're not really sure what to do with them, put them in your make ahead stash. You never know when you might want a tassel or a toggle or something for like your jewelry or, you know, you want to make something else with it. Kathy, scrapbooking. Kathy recommends a tea and tassel party. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I love that! Oh, so you, could have, you could you could you even can do it. sample all sorts of different teas and make tassels all day long. Tea and tassel. Mm, tea and tassel. Maybe we'll have a tea and tassel I love live that party. Idea. Get all dolled up. I would get like super fancy dolled up. Have yes. it at four o'clock. Is that when you have high tea? Four o'clock. Brits, help me out here. <laughs> Is that high tea? I know we sometimes it's three thirty. With I know the lemon, a with bit. a lemon wedge and, a, lemon and wedge. a little biscuit, and a pretty little a little teacup and saucer. <laughs> <sighs> I love tea. Thank goodness for tea. <laughs> tea and tassels. Oh, I like that. That's a great idea. I love it. And then you can just sort of spend time making tassels out of all sorts of crazy things. So, like I said, I've tried them with embroidery floss. They make a nice sort of fluffy, soft tassel. And they're really cute. They have kind of a summery, beachy feel to it. And the ones I've made out of the embroidery, uh, I should say the crochet thread, are just much more sleek looking. They're a lot more chic. They look a lot more like fine jewelry as opposed to sort of beachy jewelry. I love them both. I think they've both got really nice, they both have a really nice sort of look and feel. I, I really love these ones. I made a pair for my sister-in-law too. She picked up the beads and I made them while we were we were on Skype. That was another fun thing. I hope you guys are reaching out to friends and family, um, you know, wherever they may be and using things like, you know, online FaceTime and Skype and all this stuff because it is so fun to, uh, we, we put Skype on the little laptop and I just plunked myself at the craft table. She was painting. She was finishing off a painting. Mama was zipping around the back ground the cats were knocking stuff over and and i was sitting here working on little tassel earrings and it was like the nicest way to spend an afternoon it was almost as good as having them there better in fact because i didn't have the kittens trying to like <laughs> steal everything i was working on <laughs> but that's like it's it's not the same thing as being in person i know but boy it is it is as close as we can get right now and it's it's just i don't know it's nice it's nice to be able to sit in your own space working on a part of a project but also have people with you at the same time I love that. And I have to say, as a kid that grew up in the 80s and like the phone was that thing that came off the wall and had a great big long cord that would get tangled. I love that we now can communicate without having to hold something. That's my favorite. That's my favorite of this whole thing. I don't have to hold a device close to my head. I can just sort of flick a switch and either have you on speaker or just have like going in the background. I love it. I think it's great. Um, so Shell made up the Daisy Granny Square, hey! the tutorial from last week, Hello. and made a wall hanging that now sits on her front porch. Nicely done, Shell. So she oh said the gosh. pictures are on Instagram. Sweet. We'll have to check that Definitely out. Definitely we'll check that out. And we had a, a question here from Bethany. Mm -hmm. um, what if you run into a ball of thread that still has the packaging mm -hmm. or wrap, but it doesn't have the size? I think... Um, there's an easy way to sort that out. So I have a lot of balls like that. So for example, I've got four right here. They don't have their packaging, um, but I can tell just by looking at them that they're a size 10 because of how thin they are. And this is how I figure that. So remember, just like in yarn, the thread and the, the categories of size or weight have a little bit of variance to them. You know, you'll know that if you've made something with a size four and then made the same thing with a size four and like there's a great big change in the difference of size is because not all yarns and threads are made identical. So the weight 
or the size can really vary. Um, if it's if it's about this, if it's a little thicker than if you've got a pair of jeans and you look at that stitching that goes through the pockets, like any of the fancy stitching, if it looks like it's about that thickness, you've got a size 10. Also, if you've got um, embroidery floss that you can hold up against it, if it's that size or a bit thinner, then you've got a size 10 or something that fits into the size 10 category. Um, but if you're not sure what you've got, chances are you're not really launching into a giant fancy project anyway. And always make a little swatch. So, you know, grab a hook, make a few chains, make a few double crochets or something. The nice thing about working with thread is that you can make those really crazy tall stitches like triple treble. And, you know, that are like this tall if you use yarn, but they're really only this tall if you're using thread. And they're a lot more easy to handle and they, they look a lot cooler. They were more designed for, you know, thread weight. Um, but you can make up a little sample and see how big it's going to be. And that kind of gives you an idea. Oh, that's how tall a, a double crochet is going to be. OK, or that's how tall mm -hmm. a, a triple treble is going to be. Um, so always make a few samples with whatever you've got. So that way you kind of know, oh, this is going to be good for jewelry or oh, this is going to be probably be better for a doily. The size three weight yarn. Um, where have I got that? This is the stuff that is a little bit thicker than the size 10. Uh, I mean, the threads don't vary a tremendous amount. You know, there's, you know what sewing thread is. That's pretty thin stuff. That would be like a 12 or 15, I think, in the thread, the thread world. But um, the size three is a little thicker. It's really a bit thicker than an embroidery floss. Same size or a bit thicker. That's a size three. Um, a th a five is somewhere between a 10 and a three. I don't think there's actually like one, two, three, four, five. I don't think there's like individual things. They kind of just jump a few numbers. At least that's been my experience. I've only ever seen threes, fives, ones, and tens. And the ones, they I don't see those anymore anymore. I just see sock weight yarn. So you can get sock weight yarn or you can get size three, size five um, crochet thread or size 10. So there's usually only two sizes of thread available in most places that sell yarns, at least where I've been. I'm sure if you go to a um, if you go to a place that specializes in threads, you can find a lot more. Uh, but the size three is a little easier to use, um, and it's it doesn't look like something you could easily thread through a needle and start sewing with. So a little thicker, about the same size as embroidery thread or thicker. Um, and one size one, if you have size one or anything that falls into the size one category, it'll be about the same thickness as a sock weight yarn or a super fine weight yarn. And again, if you're doing a little sampler, so if you think you have something that looks like a sock weight size yarn, pull out your three millimeter hook. Like I think that's like a D or a C. Hold on, let me check my hooks. What have I got here? So that's a 3.75. There's a three, so a 3.25 millimeter is a D hook in the States. Um, so try a D with your sock weight yarn or somewhere around there, like a little small hook. If you think you've got thread, I usually start with a size two millimeter because I don't like to go down to the super fine. I'm gonna grab my, my super fine hooks here. Hang on a second. So if we can zip over to the other camera for a second, sweetheart. And I'm just gonna show a few of my my other little hooks. So these are all for working with thread. You've probably seen these or heard of these. These Now I've got the comfort grip. These are Clover comfort grips. And you don't see the hook because these ones, this is another reason I love these. Um, these hooks all came with a little cap. And that's why, because I'm not even sure you can see that hook. This is a one millimeter. This is practically an ice pick. You have got to be so careful with these things. They are so small. Um, some of these hooks are so tiny, yes, you can actually poke yourself and draw blood like you would if you were using a sewing needle. Here's a 0.6 millimeter, my gosh. I don't even think I've got thread. I would, you could crochet with sewing thread with that. That is so small. I'm not even sure you can see it. I'm gonna try and hold it as, as, as flat as I can. That camera seems to be a little blurrier than the other one. Well, let me just say still, this. It's still fine, the, it's not so bad. The head of this crochet hook is Thinner than my standard sewing needles. It is so small. Anyway, this is why they all have these little caps because otherwise they, you know, <laughs> they're crochet hook weapon. Depends on how you hold it. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are all meant for working with thread. And I usually start with a two millimeter. I've got a two millimeter here somewhere. It's a 175. 
Diddly -dee -dee -dee. I'll just use the 175. So, is that the so 175, you can kind of see that hook a little bit more. So two millimeter, 175, uh, also known as a number zero. That's the size I would start with, with a crochet thread, no matter what size it was, just to kind of give myself a little idea of how it feels. And then if it feels like the stitches are, it's just like yarn, if the stitches feel too tight, I would go up a size. If the stitches feel too loose, I would go down a hook size. So if I want to tighten up my stitches, I go down a hook size. But um, that is... That is that. Gosh, those are pretty. I'm just gonna stick those behind me. All nice little sort of pastel-y colors. All right. I'm just gonna put away my needle so I don't accidentally sit on it. Bye -bye. There were there were a couple of good questions, but I lost them in the chat. Hmm. <laughs> good coffee. Um. All right. Well. I don't really think there's a whole thing I can say about thread, or at least that I haven't thought about it. I will say this though, um, in general, if you're thinking about playing with thread, especially since the weather's hot, maybe you've never tried it before, you wanna, this is a great time when we're all sort of stuck at home and we're a little uncertain about things to push our craft barriers a little bit. I feel like I've been doing that a lot lately. I've been trying to think about using the yarns and the things I have a little bit differently. I've been trying to think about projects that I've never tried that maybe I was a little bit hesitant to. I figure now that I've got a little bit of extra time on my hands, I will try. I will try and push out my boundaries a little bit. And I've been having a lot of fun. I mean, obviously I've made a whole bunch of these little tassels. That was just a really enjoyable afternoon. And then I ended up making some more. Um, and I recommend you give that a try because it's it's simple. It's a fun way to get used to the feel of that crochet thread around your fingers. I will also say too, if you've never tried working with crochet thread and you want to give it a try, start with a familiar pattern. If you know how to make a granny square, try making a granny square with crochet thread. It's not going to be a same size granny square. It's probably going to be a little tiny thing, no bigger than a like like a, a dollar coin or a silver dollar coin but make two of them out of thread sew them together and turn them into earrings and you've got like the cutest little crochet miniature granny square earrings which is like the perfect piece of jewelry for us crocheters or turn it into a brooch just you know put a little mm -hmm. pin on the back um you reminded me that was the question i was going to oh. ask you um you may have already answered it though possibly someone was asking can i use crochet thread for any crochet project um yeah, it just depends on what the project's for. So for example, I am about to start trying to make slightly larger granny squares holding several strands of thread together. And I'll let you all know how that goes once I get sort of into my first one. Just sort of like we've been doing with the big beautiful baskets and the baby beautiful baskets, holding multiple strands together and a slightly larger hook. I don't know how it's gonna look, so I'm gonna give it a try. Um, you can use cotton for projects that are good for cotton. You can use wool for projects that are good for wool. So think about the fiber. And then if you're working on, you know, if you want to make some clothing or something with, with thread, start small if you've never done it before. So for example, that little collar that I showed you, that's a little eh, sort of half clothing, half accessory. Um, it's a nice little way to get your feet wet. You can make an entire dress out of thread. If you're ever looking for something, if you want to go down a rabbit hole that is just mind bendingly beautiful, uh, head to Pinterest or even the internet and just look up Russian crochet wedding dress and prepare to suck in a lot of air <laughs> because some of this is just the most incredible crochet I've ever seen. It's like somebody taking, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like your grandmother's prize winning thread tablecloth on steroids. It's just like these things are, they're made haute couture, they're made to fit the body, they're incredible colors, sometimes they're all in white, they've got matching veils, oh my gosh. And of course, it hangs like a dream because it's got this, this like crochet thread has a bit of weight to it because of just the way it's made. Oh, beautiful, yeah. So go down that rabbit hole this afternoon, oh my <laughs> goodness. Um, and yeah, you can use that thread to make anything because it's just small, that's all. It's just gonna take you longer, but for sure. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Super chat. Super chat. This is from, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, Valenia. Valenia. Valenia Artis. Nice. <laughs> it's just a super chat. Thank you no so message. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions about thread projects, working with thread, um, you know, 
anything kind of thread related, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. We do try to get to our comments as much as we can and answer our questions. I hope this was a little bit helpful. I hope it inspires you to just dive into that supply of thread and just try something. And if nothing else, even if you don't want to crochet, try making some of these cute little tassels. Um, they make they make nice little accessories for a lot of things. You, if you scrapbook, if you are just a book reader, um, there's a lot of reasons you can use a tassel. And I like to pad out my, not just my make ahead stash, but I also have a stash of other things I've made that might be used in other projects. So I've got a box full of appliques. I've got a box full of little things like, you know, homemade crochet buttons and um, tassels and stuff. These are little tiny accessories that I like to go and get every once in a while if I make make a hat or I make I make a scarf or I feel like it's just missing a little something I'll go into my little make ahead stash boxes of appliques or you know crochet buttons and stuff and I'll just see well does one of these sort of fit and then you know I decorate it a little bit so it's kind of like making your own craft supplies <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah give that a try um and if you have any questions let us know and um, that, I think that's probably it for today unless you had any extra things well to Molly, to Molly would like to see some other variations of crocheted earrings Oh yeah. So for sure. Yeah. Uh, someone earlier asked if we would do more um, scrap gan blankets. Oh, I love scrap gans. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good thing to do right now because that's what we're doing. We're working through our stash. Yeah, working through the stash. Um, so, so there's a couple ways you can sure. make scrap gans. <clears throat> you can just mix all the yarns together like we did with our scrap gan blanket, um, or you can do motifs, individual motifs. So there's you can either do it make the blanket all at once sort of like back and forth back and forth or you can just do it in motifs and and the daisy granny square we just did is really good for using up um a lot of colors because you can make all your daisies the same and you can make the border all the same color but you can constantly change the background and honestly granny squares are great for that so if you're trying to bust through stash um experiment hold two strands together you know uh make a, a wonder ball by just grabbing all of your short bizarre ends and just you know kind of connecting them all together and then just see what that makes you i love doing that that's fun um i recommend though you try to keep all your fiber the same so for example all acrylic or all cotton or all wool uh because when you go to wash these things it just it's just easier to wash something when all the fibers are the same um and if you do mix your fibers that's not the end of the world just remember that you have to wash it gently in cold water. And if you're really unsure, hand washing is the way to go. And don't put it in the dryer. Let it like lay flat or hang. You can hang it to dry. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. We've got two super chats. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. A big thank you to Kathy. Lovely, this feels. Big thank, thank you, you to Kathy and a big thank you to Valkyrian Wolf hey, Song. Thank you both. <laughs> um, Valkyrian says, I can't commit to the monthly right now, but I can do this little bit. Thank Love you, you guys. Thank you very much. Aww. We appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. I know it's a crazy time. It People is a are, strange time. It's for sure. Actually, it's about the strangest, isn't it? So <laughs> thank mm. you. We just appreciate it. And we just appreciate you all hanging out with us today. It's a Friday here at least it's sunny and warm and that just puts me in the best mood and certainly puts me in a, everything puts me in a crafty mood. Rain puts me in a crafty mood, sun puts me in a crafty mood, <laughs> staying home puts me in a crafty mood. I think I was just born to craft. Where's my t-shirt? That's born for sure. <laughs> yeah. Golly. Anyway, that's our little talk on thread and in particular tassels. I just love these. By the way, when you make one of these, you're going to wander around just stroking it all day. It's nice. It's a nice sort of take yeah, on the Yeah, they feel tool. really they good. Do. They feel really nice. They're just little like yeah all yeah. right so we'll show them let's show them close up sure. once more sure, and sure, we'll sure. wrap it up so there's the one we made today there's that little green one this one's made out of these these three this is all sort of embroidery floss i made a made a set of three one to sort of a pair of earrings i made this one a little bit thicker just to hang on my my little uh bracelet and then there's a bi-colored set and the way to make a bi-color or try or quarter quart quart quattro i don't know how do you say that quad color um you just wrap so much of one color around your hands and then snip it and then stay there and then wrap some more and snip it and stay there and wrap some more and you just keep wrapping it around your fingers different colors um so for example if you were going to do a 20 wrap tassel that gets this thickness for that i would do 10 wraps of orange and 10 wraps of blue and then you can just tie it off of whatever you want and you get this really cool like two colored tassel effect so have fun. Oh my gosh. There is just, 
I don't know. If you go down the tassel, the tassel rabbit hole, like I've done in the last little while, I, there's just so many neat ways you can use tassels, so many neat ways you can make tassels. You can make really big, fancy ones. I just love them. I'm just, I'm obsessed with tassels. Now. All right. <laughs> So there, yeah, our little talk on thread and tassels. And uh, like we said, leave some comments if you've got them or questions in the in the, the box down below. Definitely check out Russian thread crochet wedding dress and go down that little rabbit hole. That is just glorious. Um, thread veils, stuff like that, like the thread gloves, like all those really fancy things. If you're, you know, really looking to aspire to some kind of clothing creation, that's amazing. That's on my bucket list. I want to make something that fancy at some point. Um, and um, tassels, try some tassels, they're really fun. <laughs> and you can make them with your friends. I love the tea and tassel idea. I'm so totally on board for that. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend. If you're in the States and you're having a long weekend, I hope it's wonderful. I hope you, uh, you have a chance to chat with friends and family, even if it's virtually. And um, everybody stay safe and stay healthy and stay crafty. Because crafty keeps you happy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Have a great weekend. Have a great afternoon or morning or night or wherever you wherever are. Wherever you are. We'll see you next time. See you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>